today's video is going to be linked to the previous videos of um, looking at the examples of Propan 1 oil and Propan 2 oil. Today we're going to be focusing on ethers, which is an organic family, which is an isomer of alcohols. So the purpose of this is to show that the proton NMR, that is firstly using the number of proton environments and the low resolution and high resolution uh, proton NMR for um, each example will allow us to identify between isomers of each of those. So we can see that um, for this example here, which we're going to use uh, methoxyethane, which is an isomer of propan 1 and propan 2 that we have a CH3, which is next to an oxygen. I do not have a CH3 next to an oxygen anywhere else. So this is going to be one proton environment, and it has three hydrogens that occupy that environment. Oxygen doesn't have a hydrogen directly bonded to it, so that is not a proton environment. Next one along is we have a CH2. We don't have that anywhere else in the molecule, and there are two hydrogens which can be found in there. And then we have a CH3 at the end, which is next to a CH2, which I don't have anywhere else, which has three protons in that environment. So from just identifying the number of proton environments, we can identify one of these isomers. We can identify the propan 1 all straight from that because this would have four peaks, whereas propan uh, 2 all and methoxyethane would have three proton environments. So that would allow us, just from looking at the number of proton environments and the number of peaks that would be on our low resolution, to identify between those organic molecules. So what we're going to do now um, is we are going to draw the low resolution HNMR um, for methoxyethane and we'll compare the spectra produced to the propan tool, which we have already done in a previous video. So if I'm looking at this here, um, I have got a CH3, which is bonded to an O. Okay, so that would be written as CH3O dash and this can be found in our data booklet as here. Oh, sorry. Here. And we can see that that's for an alcohol or an ether. In this case, we're looking at an ether. And the chemical shift is given as 3.9 to 3.5. Now, remember the hydrogens I'm interested in are these ones here that are in that proton environment. And that's going to be a height of 3. So I'm going to put it at 3.5. And I'm going to do a height of 3 here to represent um, that proton environment. The next one along is a CH2. Can we see that that's bonded to an O and it's bonded to an R? So we are going to be looking for an R CH2O. Can we see that we've got an R CH2O? And again, that's 3.9 to 3.5. This, for me, is my greenhouse, so I'm going to highlight the hydrogens in green. And that's going to be a height of 2. I'm going to put that a little bit further up, and we'll put that just before 4, which is about here. And I'm going to do that a height of 2. The last proton environment is a CH3, which is bonded to a R group. So we're going to be doing RCH3. And if I look at the chemical shift that we've got here, that's 1.5 to 0.9. For plotting, again, I need to colour my number of hydrogens for my height, which is proportional. And I'm going to do that at 1.5. No, I'm going to do it at 1, actually. I've changed my mind. I'm going to do it at 1. And that's going to be at a height of 3. So if I compare that back to propan tool, what we can see is that the number of peaks, although we've got the same number of peaks, that the chemical shifts are different for those and that the height of the peaks are different as well. Um, and that's due to the number of hydrogens that can be found in that proton environment. So we could probably identify um, between methoxyethane and propan tool just from the low resolution HNMR. But what we're going to do to confirm that is we're going to then look at the uh, high resolution HNMR when we're looking at the splitting of um, each of our environments. So I'm going to just replicate this again. What I've done is I've zoomed in and just taken this and I'm going to make it a little bit wider so that my splitting falls within the chemical range. I'm going to do the heights here of height of three 
My pink one was at 3.5 at a height of 3. Just before 4 at 3.9, we did a height of 2. All right, and on each of these, we can't forget that we need to have TMS plotted. TMS, which is always plotted at zero. It doesn't matter the height of that. So we've got we've got three different environments. I have got my pink house. And for my pink house, I'm looking at the next door neighbor. Can you see that I've got uh, oxygen? There's no hydrogens in that environment. So I would do zero plus one and that would be equal to a split of one. So it's a singlet, so that would just stay as it is. The next house along I've got is a greenhouse. And on the left hand side, I have no hydrogens as my next door neighbor. Plus I've got my blue house and in my blue house, I've got three. Plus I need to add one for the N plus one rule. Remember N plus one is your neighbors plus one. 0 plus 3 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, which would give me a split of 4, so that would be a quartet. So I want to do my splitting into 4. And the last house I have is the blue house. The blue house has one next door neighbour, the only neighbour that it's got is the green house. There are two hydrogens found in that environment, so that's my neighbours. Plus I've got to add 1, which means that my split here would be of 3. which would be like so. So this is how we would do the proton NMR, the high resolution proton NMR for methoxyethane.